part of what I wanted to say I couldn't deliver I didn't know any way Hi there, welcome to the fan carpet. I'm Sophia Jessica. And I'm Corinna. And we are here today at the Gold Movie Awards, the fourth annual event. This is a very, very important night in film because it is celebrating all the best new films from around the world in independent cinema. It's a great place to be. We've got many celebrity guests and uh, many directors and actors that have come to support the event. And also, of course, all the nominees and creative people up for the award. We've seen some amazing people win tonight. And we're really, really keen to see what's going to happen after the awards ceremony where all these shining bright new stars will head to in their next venture. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> so I'm now joined by Ross, Ben and Dan. So you guys have been nominated for some awards tonight. What have you been nominated for? Uh, we've got best video clip for a music video we did. We've also got best production design, costume and trailer for a short film we've done. So four in total, which is pretty exciting. It's very, very exciting. So have you been to this awards ceremony before or is this a whole new experience for you? Uh, no, we haven't. We've been here the first time at the Gold Movie Awards, but it's... Um, the film that Ross just mentioned, this is the third festival that um, we've been nominated for, so we're looking for more success tonight. We've won at the last two previous um, awards nights, both in Wales and Birmingham, so we're hoping the Gold Movie, Movie Awards uh, awards us something nice to go home with. Um, we're looking forward to this evening. And so why do you think awards like this are very important for people that are up and coming and trying to really break through into the industry? Uh, I think it's uh, a collection of a few things. Um, this business is very, very, very hard to come by. Uh, there's a lot of people who want to do it. There's a lot of people who watch movies. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's and all those big stars, they are people to look up to. Um, that's how we started off. Uh, Ross, for example, he looks at directors and he loves Steven Spielberg, personal favourite of mine. So that's Ross's adaption to film. He connects himself with his creativity and sees, oh, what's the difference between me to Steven Spielberg? Massive differences, but he needs to make himself unique. Ben, as a producer for Mockingbird, he goes, okay, so we have the, uh, the producers of the world. What can I do that's going to broad me into this same industry? What can I do different which is going to make me do something? That's, that's very interesting. So basically, although you're mentioning that obviously these big directors, they might have the fame, but ultimately everyone has that accessibility to become the next Spielberg, but with their own unique identity. Every, everybody has that. Everybody has their unique way. Uh, when we sit in a dark room and we come up with Francois, we did three months of sitting in a dark room and going, what do we want to write about? We had a true story, and it's my granddad's story, and we go, how can we, A, bring that to life, B, make it that everybody gets it as... We are so enthusiastic about it because it's about my granddad. So how do we bring a broad audience in to have the same passion that we do? How do we do it? We sit there and we spend hours on A, making it as factual as we possibly can, and B, to be able to go, oh, let's make it interesting for Hollywood. Because Hollywood changes a lot of things. We don't want to go too much out the line of Hollywood. We really don't. We want to keep it almost documentary, but at the same time we need to make it sell. So we sat in a room, 
blinds down, big TV on, and literally write what we want to write about. And and it's it's having that capability of being able to write interestingly and factually. And so far it's working. We did uh, Wales International. We got best screenplay for that. We did Birmingham. Uh, film festival and we got best costume for that so it seems to be working what we're we doing at the minute well, this is fantastic so really when you have a true story a personal story there's a level of authenticity there so you can get creative with how you're going to tell it but already the audience are going to be hooked in because actually it's coming from a place that's from your heart and not just trying to pander to what a lot of Hollywood films do which is pander to what sells you know let's do remakes let's do this but you're doing something that's really trying to connect with people and are you hoping that tonight's going to be Another big gong for Francois. Is that the film? That yeah, yeah. We'd we'd like to, like you say, you've got to you've got to put a bit of uh, bit of beef in there to chunk it up, make it sellable. But it is a true story about this man's granddad, and we'd like to get that across tonight. And it it, it is a great story. You know, it's quite unique. So. Before we go, can you tell us a little bit about what the film is about without without giving too many spoilers away? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, uh, Dan sort of briefly mentioned it. it's about what happened to his granddad in the war. He's a French, a French Algerian man that was captured in World War Two um, as part of the Tunisian campaign in 1943. He was sent to Germany as a prisoner of war um, in, in Munich, and then he managed to escape dramatically and um, hung onto the bottom of a chassis of a train and for like three or two or three days. All this we found out in a newspaper article that was written about him in the 60s, because unfortunately Jean Francois is not with us anymore. He died in the 90s. But it's all about what happened to his granddad and the, 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 the lengths that a man will go to to survive um, through testing times. And it's just, you know, we have to fill in some blanks with fiction. And, um, and it's, it's a concept film of a, feature, uh, of a feature film that we've written. And, um, yeah, a fascinating story about what happened to him and, and a, a worthy tale to tell, basically. So Thank you so much for talking to me this evening. I can't wait to see it. And I wish you so much luck with uh, your awards this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more next time. Bye. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.